area here of Sukhumvit Soy 3 is undoubtedly one of the most exciting and exotic areas in Bangkok. Now, over the years, it's become known as the Arab Quarter. And every year, thousands of tourists from all over the Middle East and Africa flock to Thailand for a holiday. And most come to regard this area here as a home away from home. And there's a very good reason for that. The Arab Quarter of today is very much a melting pot of cultures and traditions. This may be Thailand, but there are influences here from all the Gulf countries and much of Africa. An important criteria for all Muslim people is the availability of halal food, and there's no lack of that. Scores of restaurants line the streets, and the aromas emanating from within are tantalizing to say the least. Shish kebabs, an assortment of Arab breads, chicken tikka, it's a gourmet's paradise. And whatever this is smells sensational. from my country, this small lamb, all from Arab like this mandi, name mandi, for my country, this uh, small chip, lamb, small lamb, very, very, very tasty, if you like, see, very nice, wow, oh, beautiful. Mandi is actually a speciality of Yemen but is very popular all over the Gulf. Religious freedom has always existed in Thailand, and although the country is predominantly Buddhist, there's a rich Muslim culture as well, particularly in the south, where Muslim fishing villages dot the coast. Back in Bangkok, there are three mosques in the Arab quarter alone, which is important to many of the growing number of Arab tourists. Rashid has had the Petra restaurant for four years, and apart from the food, he knows exactly what appeals to his customers. Time for shopping. Maybe they find it cheaper than other countries. But definitely cheaper than European countries. Families make up a growing portion of the Arab tourist trade, and the women. Well, frankly, women seem to be the same the world over. Your wife likes the shopping, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> she likes Thailand. She likes Thailand too much. Yeah. Yeah. Perfume shops are in abundance in the Arab Quarter, and most specialise in a musky fragrance that's much sought after in the Middle East. It's made from agar or garu wood, only found in the Southeastern Asian countries of Laos, Malaysia, Cambodia, and of course Thailand itself. And it's the agar wood from Cambodia that fetches the big prices. This is Cambodia? Yes, Cambodia. So if I wanted to buy this, how much would this cost me? <laughs> uh, for you, I will give you a special price. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you would. <laughs> Uh, how much would that be, though, a bag? Uh, this per kilo, I sell about 2,000 US dollars. 2,000 US yes. dollars? Uh. Sadly, that's a bit above the old BT budget. The wood is ground to a powder and then mixed with water and oil to create a perfume that's sold in these exquisite bottles for hundreds of dollars. Even so, the prices are regarded as bargains by most Arabs. Now, in Middle Eastern countries, of course, it's the custom to kiss somebody on both cheeks when you greet them. So this is perfect. A little drop here and a little drop here, and you smell absolutely fantastic. Mind you, all I have to do is find somebody to kiss. It's the sheer diversity of the shopping opportunities that appeals to the tourists. Huge shopping centres such as the Royal Garden have a breathtaking array of goods and there are numerous bargains to be found in Thailand's famous gem stores. Most Arabian tourists now venture further afield, taking time to enjoy the beaches of Pattaya and Phuket. All over the country, the lush tropical jungles of Thailand's many national parks provide a startling contrast for people often more accustomed to the arid conditions of the desert.
And if the camel is the ship of the desert, the ship of the jungle is surely the elephant. And elephant trekking has now become a major draw card, providing these magnificent animals and their mahouts with a viable income once feared lost after the demise of the logging industry. Back in the Arab quarter, the tourists and Thailand's Arab and African residents have created their home away from home. Just up the street from what the locals tell me is the best seafood stall in Bangkok, the men are enjoying an evening tradition. Now if you're a smoker, this is a very, very pleasant way to pass the uh, late afternoon. In the Western world, they probably refer to this as a bubbly bubbly. But in Egypt and the Gulf area, it's called a shisha. And in Turkey and Syria, it's called an argila. Basically, of course, you're smoking tobacco, but it's filtered through water. And the particular tobacco that I'm smoking at the moment is Egyptian tobacco, which is a lot milder, say, than the tobacco you find in Syria. And as I say, if you're a smoker, it's very, very pleasant. To be honest, Thailand is often simply about being pampered. Export manager Abdul Rahim Ahmed enjoys a massage. So do I, although this traditional Thai foot massage does tickle a bit. But it's in this busy parlour that Abdul Rahim points out what many of the ever-increasing number of Arab tourists regard as Thailand's most telling asset. The very important thing in Thailand is a very safe country and uh, also Thai people, so they're smart people, and friendly people. And in some ways, that really says it all. 